Lime. Brought to you by wonderful Florida citrus. Florida oranges and grapefruit, fresh frozen and canned juices. All rich in natural vitamin C and packed with Florida sunshine. Now let's all play What's My Lime? And now let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in papers from coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great privilege to have back with us again a wonderful actor who is just about to leave for Hollywood to play in a science fiction movie called The Fly, Mr. Vincent Price. Dorothy, ladies and gentlemen, one of the greatest privileges of my life is to have the opportunity of introducing the lovely, talented, and adorable Arlene Francis. I want you to come back often. Thank you, dear. <laughs> And now, the smiling publisher of Random House. And the reason he's smiling is because next week is the beginning of National Book Week. Mr. Bennett Cerf. Benson, uh, it's nice to have you with us tonight. I certainly hope the price is right tonight. <laughs> uh, this book week that Arlene's talking about is just to reacquaint the public with the fact that there are thousands and thousands of books in all the bookstores and libraries all over the country just waiting for you to find them and find the infinite joys and learning you can get out of all of them. And through no strange coincidence, one of the people who's going to help us with this week is our own superb panel moderator, John Charles Beckham. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for being with us in What's My Line, and I'm sure you all know Bennett Cerf, for whom the chemise has become the hair shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Bennett decided to take on the new fashions last week, and he hasn't begun to get through the telegrams yet. <laughs> Wait till he gets to the letters. <clears throat> and he may not be able to get through some of the occupations that we've lined up for Mr. Cerf and his colleagues on the panel tonight. We will also have a famous mystery guest, before the panel, a little bit later in the show, and we'll meet our first challenger in just... All right, now let's meet our first contestant. Will you come in and sign in, please? Robert? Robert Briscoe, is that right? In fact, uh, to be more correct, and panel, we know that you recognize our first guest tonight, the Honorable Robert Briscoe, former mayor of the city of Dublin, and uh, a man who... <laughs> a man whose last visit with us was on uh, an occasion of a visit to the United States when you were still serving as mayor of Dublin, the Lord Mayor of Dublin. Now, panel, <coughs> the whole purpose of this is Mr. Briscoe, needless to say, has some other activity to uh, account for his success and the affection in which Ireland holds him than being Lord Mayor of Dublin. And you are tonight to try to find out what it is that Mr. Briscoe is interested in besides politics. Now, would you come yes. over here and join me, please, sir? Not very good at pulling things out of the <laughs> <laughs> Are you familiar with the way we keep score, sir? I am, yes. All right, in that event, let's let uh, the folks at home and the friends in the audience here in the theater know exactly what your other line is. <laughs> All right, panel, I will tell you that Mr. Briscoe in this context is self-employed, and let's begin the general questioning with Arlene Francis. Well, Mr. Briscoe, self-employed, is there some product in what you do, Mr. Briscoe? Yes. And uh, is it a useful product? Very useful, yes. Is it found in this country? Yes. Uh, is it anything that is edible? Yes. 
Is it something that grows above the ground? <laughs> well, yes. There's a bit of it below the ground, too? No. That makes it one down and nine to go, Mr. You trapped Sir. me. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Briscoe, is this uh, edible rather than drinkable? No. Uh, sorry, is it edible rather than drinkable, sir? Oh, sorry, yes. Yeah, I thought you said... Or no, rather than drinkable. Oh, sir, yes. I mean, it's not like that. Anything to do with that wonderful Irish whiskey, you know? No. Uh, <clears throat> would you be able to buy this product, this food stuff, in a package at any time? Yes. Would it be eaten more usually at one particular meal than at all three? Yes. Would that meal be dinner? Yes. Uh, would it be served somewhere during the middle of the dinner rather than at the beginning or the end? Yes. It could be. I think, um, actually, may we have a small conference? Yes, you may, John. Goes on, goes on, goes on. It could. It could be both. It could be. It could be both. Mm-hmm. Would this be in the category of either fruits or vegetables? No. Fruits or vegetables makes it two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Then, Mr. Briscoe, would it be in the category of animal? Yes. Uh, this is an edible animal. Is it larger than a chicken? Oh, yes. Is it as large as a pig? Yes, larger. Uh, is it a four-legged animal? Yes. And it's lo is it larger than a pig? Yes. Uh, Small conference. Wait a minute. All right, Dorothy. It's larger than a pig. <coughs> yeah. I have a feeling you're going to get me on some definition now. Is it in the pork family? No. That's three down and seven to go, Mr. Price. <laughs> uh, Mr. Briscoe, do uh, people ever give up this edible thing at any time of the year? I mean, do they eat it all times of the year, or is it a specialty product? It's a specialty product, it's yes. A specialty it's specialty product. All the year round. Uh, it's it a specialty is a product, and it's eaten all the year round, Vincent. Oh. It looks like you get a. Yes, uh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. it. That makes it four <laughs> down, <laughs> six to go to Well, I got no answer out maybe, of that one. Maybe Vincent meant, could you give it up for Lent? <laughs> <laughs> I think we should give it up for Lent. Uh, this, uh, this animal, does it have fur rather than hide? An edible murder? A goat? See, there's been no girl. 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 Stand girl. 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 Stand girl. 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 Stand girl. Girl. Not Let's now, go. please. This, this is my sir. chance to tell you. I hope you get elected again as Lord High Mayor. You don't like this product he's got, huh? Look here, hair shirt, sir. Flattery will get you nowhere. Ask some questions. Would this animal be in the cattle family? Yes. It would? Yes. Uh... Then it has, uh, is it some, something that comes from the carcass of a cow? Yes. Oh, it's what not pork, it? for goodness sake. No, but it's fur. Fur. <laughs> fur. fur on a cow? Fur. All cows I know wear fur. Haven't you seen Arlene's lovely cow coat? It's beautiful. Cow skin, uh, certainly. Yeah, that's unborn cow. Oh, uh, no, it's it is. <laughs> Let's get on with the question. Oh, uh, it's born, but it's young. It is some. It does come from a cow. Yes. Well, then you uh, are obviously in the beef business of some yes. sort. Yes. Well, the... Actually, Bennett, you are right, and you get the full credit for the identification. But there is a rather particular yes. facet. Vincent, you look as though you might have it. It must be you... veal if it's only a veal. Is that what you say? Yes. Well, for that we'll give it six down and four to go. Now you <laughs> want to take a guess on the special better? Uh, steaks. No, seven down and three to go, Miss Kilgallen. Do you raise cows, Mr. Briscoe? No. Eight down and two to go. Right. We'll skip you this time, Vincent, Miss Francis. But you know, I don't think I followed everything. He's in the <laughs> beef business, you said. No, but there's a rather He's special a butcher, aspect butcher, to this maybe. participation no, in this particular business no. that. Um, oh, you mean like butchering? Is it, it calves foot jelly? Calves foot oh, jelly? That makes it ten dollars. <laughs> no, no. Only other thing I know. No, actually, the good fun in this is that 
In Ireland, the Lord Mayor of Dublin, recent Lord Mayor of Dublin, is the manufacturer of kosher meat products. Ah. <laughs>